everybody, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here in the channel, we are going to be talking about Days of Heaven and its Criterion Collection 4K Blu-ray. So Days of Heaven was released in 1978. It is written and directed by Terrence Malick. This was actually a second feature film after Badlands. It stars Richard Gere, Brooke Adams, Sam Shepard, and Linda Mance. And Linda Mance also does the narration for this film. What else do I get into today? In fact, all three of us been going places. Which is very important because this film is really told through the narration and the visual storytelling. There is not much dialogue through this film. And Terrence Malick himself has been called pretentious in the past with movies like The Thin Red Line or Tree of Life. And I've always really enjoyed Terrence Malick's films. This is actually the first time, though, I've ever seen Days of Heaven. I don't know why it took me so long to see this one. I'm a huge fan of cinematography and beautiful looking cinematography. And this was actually shot by Nistar Almendros, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing his name wrong. But he actually didn't do all of the cinematography on this film. Actually, he probably did about 50%. And the other 50% was done by Haskell Wexler. And this actually created an issue with Haskell Wexler because he didn't actually win the Academy Award for this film. That actually went to Nistar Amadras, who actually started the film. And he was a little bit bitter about that. And you can't really blame him. If 50% of your work ends up in the film and you don't actually get credit for it, it could be a little bit disappointing. But he has come around and said that, you know what, the original vision wasn't his. He was just finishing somebody else's vision. So he said maybe he didn't deserve the Academy Award but back when this first happened he was very bitter about it and I don't blame him this movie itself is known for its incredible cinematography it's been considered one of the greatest shot films of all time you see these visuals on the screen and they are just absolutely stunning they are what stands out in this film is the beautiful visuals and Terrence Malick just knows how to make these visually stunning films whether it be in Badlands the Thin Red Line or Tree of Life Tree of Life is probably still my favorite either that or Badlands from him but I do understand what a lot of people are saying when you watch his films you know there's not much dialogue it's told through the visuals and this has actually been something that's been coming up lately with Dune 2. Denis Villeneuve actually came out and said pretty recently that he doesn't find dialogue to be the most important thing in film he finds the visual storytelling to be the most important thing and Terrence Malick clearly feels the same way you've heard about those shots of the wheat fields just flowing in the wind and I get why a lot of people might not like that if you come into this film hoping for a very entertaining film this is probably not the most entertaining film it's more like a slice of life film we're following around these characters at the beginning of this movie Richard Gere he's working at a steel mill and then unfortunately ends up getting in a fight with his boss and he ends up accidentally killing him and now him and his girlfriend played by Brooke Adams and his sister played by Linda Mance who also does the narration for this film they're on the run now they run off to the Texas Panhandle they end up getting a job working for Sam Shepard who is a very famous playwright by the way I think this is actually one of his first or if not his first acting role and he does a great job in this movie I actually think that Sam Shepard was my favorite character in this film I really think that the heart really runs through him and Linda Mance's character. As good as Richard Gere is in this film, you kind of don't really feel for him too much. I actually kind of feel like he creates a lot of his own issues because he kind of flies off the handle every now and again, and he's not truthful. The one big thing about this movie is that even though Richard Gere and Brooke Adams are dating, it's 1916, they're working for Sam Shepard, and they don't want to let anybody know that they're dating, so they tell them that they're brother and sister. Of course, this is going to create issues. People notice them, like, you know, hanging out with each other, you know, leaning on each other. Doesn't seem like regular brother and sister material unless you're in the Game of Thrones world. So this does create more issues. But then, of course, Sam Shepard ends up falling for Brooke Adams. You know, he's a lonely guy. We, it's revealed very early in the movie that he probably doesn't have much time left to live. Even though he's a rich farmer, he lives in this big, beautiful mansion with these big open farmlands that he owns. But he's a very, very, very lonely guy. And he just, he, he speaks so softly. He never, ever flies off the handle. For a big, rich guy, he seems like a very nice person. And you kind of feel for him and what he's going through. And he just has this crush on Brooke Adams. But then, of course, Richard Gere comes up with this plan. You know what? He's going to die. Marry the guy. And we'll take everything after he passes on because he's going to leave it all to you. So, again, that's why I kind of feel like Richard Gere, he's, he's a little bit selfish. But there are certain lines of dialogue that he delivers in this movie that really did connect with me. Like where you believe that you were going to be something more than what you ended up being. You know, this guy really does manual labor for a living. And he seems like a very smart person. He expected more from his life. And it didn't turn out that way. And you understand why that would create bitterness and anger and all that really comes through in the emotions on Richard Gere's face and I think that Richard Gere is one of the best actors at portraying emotion on his face and Brooke Adams is also really good at that you know she's got those big eyes those beautiful eyebrows she's just got a very beautiful looking face and she can also portray that emotion on her face as well and Sam Shepard does the same exact thing and I think that's why casting these actors was just absolutely perfect they all play their parts amazingly and then Linda Mance who has the most dialogue in this movie because she does the narration is also fantastic I really do think that 
that her narration does help to move this movie along. And they didn't even discover that they were going to use that narration until they got in the editing bay because this movie took two years to edit. They finished filming in 1976. It was a very hard film to make. You know, this was all shot using natural lighting. Again, talking about the beautiful cinematography. And they wanted to shoot it in the magic hour. So that means you only have about 25 minutes to an hour to actually shoot the film. And that's why a lot of this film takes place during beautiful, gorgeous sunsets. You know, just as the sun is setting. And even when they would lose all the light, they were still able to capture some beautiful shots where we just have the actors silhouetted over a beautiful background. And we'll linger on this for a very, very, very long time. And that's why I understand why some people might not like this movie. But if you're a fan of visual storytelling, Days of Heaven really is one of the best. But it took so long to shoot, then so long to edit. And they didn't find that narration until they got in the editing bay because apparently Terrence Malick would just keep shooting and shooting, shooting and shooting and shooting, and then they just end up with all of this film. He would just keep telling the actors and everybody working with him, we'll figure it out in the edit, but it doesn't seem like he had a plan going into this, so he had to figure it out, and we ended up with a beautiful hour and 35 minute film that just shows you the power of editing, and you really get this whole story told with just that narration and the beautiful visual storytelling. It's a very limited amount of dialogue, but yet I found the entire film completely gripping. I loved every single minute of it. I think it came in at the perfect length, and and the visuals, man. I, there was just certain times I literally would throw my hands up and go, my God, that looks incredible. And this happened numerous times throughout this film. This is by far one of the best looking films that I have ever seen. Even if you don't enjoy the film itself from the plot and story standpoint, if you're a fan of cinematography, this is one you absolutely have to check off the list because it just looks incredible. You know, I ended up actually really loving the film by the end of it, but I did understand in the beginning why people might not enjoy this type of film. So for me, this film just checked a lot of boxes. I absolutely loved it. I can't believe it took me this long to to watch it this actually might be my favorite Terrence Malick film replacing Badlands and Terrence Malick is the meatloaf when it comes to the film industry you know this movie came out in 1978 he didn't make another film for 20 years until 1998 and just like meatloaf meatloaf's bad out of hell came out in the late 70s like a number one album it wasn't until 16 years later that bad out of hell 2 came out That went to number one. The longest gap between number one albums, 16 years, was Meatloaf and Terrence Malick took 20 years between Days of Heaven and The Thin Run Line. Both of them are great films in their own way, and that just shows you that it's just natural talent. Even if Terrence Malick isn't a person that everyone loves to work with, you got to appreciate the filmmaking. So even if you don't want to watch this Criterion 4K Blu-ray, which is gorgeous, by the way, I still can recommend you check out this film, at least for the cinematography. But let's talk about this Criterion 4K Blu-ray. Just none to do all day but crack jokes, lay around. Well, here it is, the Criterion Collection 4K Blu-ray of Days of Heaven. This 4K Blu-ray was released on December 5th, 2023. This wasn't the first time that this has actually been released by the Criterion Collection. This is actually Criterion release number 409, so this was released on DVD in the past and on Blu-ray in the past, which makes a lot of sense. It's a Terrence Malick film. It's one of those beautiful looking films. This definitely feels like what the Criterion Collection would put out. I cannot imagine any other boutique label putting out this film other than the Criterion Collection, so it makes all the sense in the world, and it also makes makes all the sense in the world why they would keep updating this film because it absolutely deserves it. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's look at this beautiful packaging that we have right here. Love the cover art on it. When you come inside, now you get a 4K disc and a Blu-ray disc. All of your extras are going to be on that Blu-ray disc. You get some nice reading material right here as well. Good paper stock, not the greatest paper stock. Both of these are going to have the same and it's only one audio track that is a DTS HD 5.1. And I've been noticing this a lot with the Criterion Collection and I don't bring it up too often, but when I talk about major studio labels like Warner Brothers and Paramount. I talk about all the accessibility options when it comes to languages and subtitles and the Criterion Collection really lacks in this area and I have to call a spade a spade. It does bother me given I speak English but I would love everybody to come to these films. This film probably gets releases in other countries from other labels but still it would be cool if people wanted to check out this 4K Blu-ray from the Criterion Collection with this packaging. You know if they have the means to do it it would be cool if they had you know other languages to watch this film in or you know at least have the subtitle option for them. I think that would be really cool but unfortunately Criterion doesn't have that and I just wanted to point that out and then one other negative and it's not a big negative is the extras because we don't really get too many on here we only get four featurettes two interviews one with sam shepherd and one with richard gear they're both really good interviews and then you had another two interviews with the camera operator and with haskell wexler the cinematographer who ended up finishing this film and his thoughts on the film the creator
creation of the film. And he said he was being completely honest in these interviews. And all four of these interviews were amazing. I thought they were great. The only thing is, is I would have liked something with Terrence Malick. We didn't get that in here. I would have liked maybe a making of documentary, a looking back, because this movie is so important with its cinematography. Would have loved a little bit more, but the four featurettes that we get on here, the four interviews, they are really good. So I can't knock it too much. We also get an audio commentary track. Again, it's not with anyone who's in the film or the director, but you know, we get it with the editor. We get it with the production designer. So it's still a good commentary track. It's just something I would have liked a little bit more, but that is a very minor complaint. The extras that we do get, they are really good. I just wanted more of them. That's really what it comes down to. And then that audio track, how is that DTS HD 5.1? It's actually really good. It really is a really well mixed track. I was actually pretty impressed with it. It was making pretty good use of my rear speakers. We get a lot of shots of like fields blowing in the wind. And you know what? It actually makes good use of your speakers. It would have been cool to get like a Dolby Atmos track where you kind of can feel it coming over you, but it's probably not that type of film. This film is really atmospheric. That's another reason why I would have liked the Dolby Atmos track, but still, I understand why they chose the DTS HD 5.1. Everything comes in crisp and clear. There are no issues with it. It's mixed very well, so the dialogue comes in clear. You don't have to adjust your volume for any reason at all. The score of this film was actually done by Amira Morricone, and I believe he won the Academy Award, his first Academy Award for this film, and he absolutely deserves it because the score is just amazing in this movie. But there's also some music done by a country artist, and all that stuff works just as well. And again, everything with the audio track comes in crisp and clear. And of course, you're just going to want to hear that score. It really is beautiful, as most Morricone scores are. But the big thing is, and this is the only thing that we really get an upgrade to, is the visuals. Now we get HDR10 and Dolby Vision over this. And when you compare it to the pack-in Blu-ray, which I believe is the previously released Blu-ray, it is a noticeable jump to 4K. First of all, things just get brighter. We maintain that film grain look, which we absolutely want to maintain that. But it never is overly grainy. It's honestly the perfect amount of grain for this type of film. But right from the opening, when we see Richard Gere in the steel mill, it's incredible. The orange glow. Like on the Blu-ray, that kind of just looks a little bit flat, even though it looks really good. I don't want to sell it short because this film is just shot beautifully. So no matter which way you see it, it's still going to be a good looking film. But when you come to 4K, that orange just glows now. We're hitting those deep blacks. I cannot find a flaw in these visuals, as I expected to not find a flaw in these visuals. Even though I had never seen the film, I had heard so many good things, and they really didn't let me down. This really lived up to expectations when it comes to the visuals, and this 4K Blu-ray matches them perfectly. Now, I was actually comparing the Dolby Vision and the HDR10, and it's very rare that I notice a difference, but the Dolby Vision actually was a little bit brighter than the HDR10, uh, but I think I still prefer the uh, HDR10, if that makes sense. I actually kind of liked it a little bit darker. Like I said, a lot of this movie takes place in the magic hour, and I thought that the HDR10 actually worked a little bit better. I think that's the option I'll be choosing to go forward over Dolby Vision. That very rarely happens. I think if Dolby Vision is on it, that's always the option I go. But every once in a while, like a movie like Super 8, I think the regular old HDR10 is actually better than the Dolby Vision on that too. Uh, same thing with Brand Stoker's Dracula. But you know, again, this is a personal preference. You might prefer the Dolby Vision over the HDR10. But when you grab this 4K Blu-ray disc, check them out for yourself. You know, you choose which one works best for you. For me, it's the HDR10. Like I said, though, it's not a world's difference but it's actually a little bit of a noticeable difference, which very rarely happens. Either way, the visuals are stunning. 10 out of 10. They are incredible, as you would expect with a movie like this. You know, it's really just going to come down to how do you feel about this film? I actually bought this in the Criterion Collection 50% off flash sale that happened pretty recently, so I was able to grab it for 25 bucks. And you know what? I wouldn't have been too upset if I would have spent more than that. I don't know if I would have spent the full $39.99 that Criterion charges, but, you know, for the $25 price, I really feel like I stole this one because it is just so such a visually stunning 4K Blu-ray. You know, obviously there's certain things missing, like I was saying with the audio commentary track, and I would have liked more extras, but honestly, it is a fantastic 4K Blu-ray, really showing you what 4K Blu-rays can do. So it's really hard for me to say that it isn't worth full price, but it's still hard for people to justify buying one movie at full price. But if there was ever one that I could say, you know what, if you can't get it on a sale, but you should really wait for a sale if you can. This movie came out in December. We have two Barnes & Noble sales this year. Keep an eye out for the Criterion Flash sales. If you can grab this for 25 bucks, it's an absolute steal. Like, I feel like I stole this one and overall how would i grade this 4k blu-ray on a score of 1 to 10 i would give this one a very solid 9 out of 10 and before we get out of here today it is friday that means it's time for our digital code giveaway in every single video we do here on friday we're going to ask you guys two digital code giveaway questions all you got to do is answer one of those in the comment section below. And as long as you do that, you come back to Monday's video. I put your name on a magic wheel. I spin that bad boy two times. The two names it lands on, they have their choice. The digital codes that you've seen on your screen before you, 
today. And I wanted to ask you guys, what is the best looking film that you have ever seen? Nothing is off the table. I'm just very curious about what film just looked best to you. Like what was the most eye candy film where you just like couldn't look away from the screen because it was so beautiful. I want to hear from you guys on that one. And then I also want to know what is your favorite film score of all time? You know, we're getting really into the technicals this week, but I'm very curious because what do you guys think is the best looking film? And what do you guys think is the best sounding film when it comes to the score? Let me know in the comment section below. All you got to do is answer one of those. So don't feel obligated to answer two of them. Just don't forget to come back to Monday's video where we'll put your name on a magic wheel. And we'll spin it two times. And if you get lucky, you win yourself a digital code. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it here for me on another episode of Let's Talk. We really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on, get out in those streets and tell your friends about us. Or you can even become a channel member like John Doe Juggalo, Jason Martin, and Mr. Smelly Potato under the producers tier, or like Frank's Media and reviews under the director's tier make sure you guys check out his channel as well we also have a friends of the channel tier which really does help support this channel as well but if you got no money to throw our way don't you guys worry about it we just really appreciate you guys checking out this video we hope you enjoyed it and if you did we'll be seeing you around